what is going on everybody my name is jeff lighty jr here with the black boss channel thank you all for tuning in i have a special guest today he's been on here he's been on here quite a few times we have mr tony Lindsay in the building writer director of where hearts lie a film that he wrote produced and directed a few years back but it, it looks like it's finally getting its just due tony how are you tonight Hey, how you doing, brother? I'm good. Thank you. Hey, that's awesome, man. So Where Hearts Lie, it's getting a special, a special screening on Fox Soul uh, December 18th. So we got a little bit over a week you know, left before it gets that special screening on Fox Soul. Just Tony, uh, how does it feel to have your movie getting put in a spotlight that maybe it didn't get? You know, that kind of spotlight some years ago when you first aired the movie, but now to finally getting it's just due and it's just recognition. Well, yeah, I mean, it feels great. You know, I'm really happy to get into this partnership with Fox Soul. Um, I did previously re release the movie, you know, on certain certain streaming platforms, uh, but it was with like another distribution company. I didn't really like the terms of that deal. So I kind of held the movie in my pocket, so to speak, until, you know, I got into a better situation and I really feel comfortable with Fox Soul. So I'm happy that we're getting ready to do this. That's awesome. That's awesome, Tony. Now, for those who haven't seen the movie, we'll show a, a teaser of the movie later. But just describe to me what the movie's about and what kind of led you to writing this type of film. All right. I'll say Where Hearts Lie is a story about how terribly wrong things can go when you keep trying to make things work with the wrong person. <laughs> like, you know how, you know, like with with the guys we like a big button to smile and yeah. you know sometimes the lady they'll see a guy he got the like the hazel eyes he has a nice car he has some some money you know we've become very superficial and shallow and materialistic in our expectations in a partner and you know i don't think we look deep enough into the things that really matter like you know compassion and character and ambition so mm -hmm. you know i i really use this movie as an opportunity to to kind of address those things because you know i was i was kind of disturbed by the state of our relationships as you see from a lot of our conversations on this platform mm -hmm. so yeah and it also touches on issues like child abuse which we don't talk en enough about um in you know publicly and also undiagnosed mental illness and alzheimer's disease Mm. Yeah, no, I, I watched the movie. Uh, Tony was gracious enough to let me see the movie. And it, it like like you said, it covers topics that, you, that just normally aren't talked about as far as black people in Hollywood or black people in movies or black people in film. A lot of times in black film, you, you get kind of the same stuff, right? You get yeah. your drug dealing type films or movie shows, TV shows. You get your, you know, the 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 magical negro type movies tv yeah. shows and things like that but this kind of was transcendent and i really loved the way it was done especially not being backed or supported or funded by big hollywood or big warner brothers or whoever i really appreciate that uh tony i want to ask you what what got you into film like what was this your first major piece of film what kind of got you into that and what led to the creation of this movie well it's funny i mean i've always been a, a creative um, I actually started in the in the music industry, producing and, and writing. I was actually in the singing group back in the days, but that's ancient history. But I've <laughs> always been very artistic and I, you know, I love writing. And I was actually in the process of writing a book that was pretty much uh, based on my own life. And a friend of mine, she's a, a producer um, for a television show. And she, you know, she took a little peek at it. And she was like, wow, you need to like write a script you need to transform this into a script so i did it and like this is my first foray into film and i'm really proud of the way that it came out because you know i mean i directed it i wrote it and i executive produced it i mean i spent all the, all the money came out of my own pocket <laughs> and it was very expensive so you know I, I really invested a lot into it and I think you all are going to love it. You're not going to look at this film and say this is like a first time filmmaker. Trust me. 
No, yeah, you, you're right about that. Uh, watching the movie, it was definitely well put together, well organized, well shot, edited, everything. Like, well, whoever you got to, to help you out on this, the team that you put together. And it had some notable actors. And we're talking about Malik Yoba, who's a veteran actor in this industry. Uh, Clifton Powell, who was a veteran actor in this industry. Yeah. Just, Tony, for someone who hadn't been in the film industry, how were you able to make some of those connections and, and pull some of those strings to get some, some heavyweights in your film? Um, tenacity and <laughs> maintaining good relationships. You know, Malik Yoba, he lives in Brooklyn and we have a lot of, you know, people in common. Clifton, uh, I have a friend that uh, used to work with him and that was kind of like a Hail Mary shot. And what's funny <laughs> is the, the character, um, the main character, his name is Brave, Brave Williams, and his father is played by Clifton Powell. And I literally wrote that part for Clifton Powell. Like a wow. friend of mine, when I was first writing the script, you know, uh, my script editor, she was like, listen, when you write this, I mean, we I mean, this is before we cast the movie. And she was like, write this part like for whoever it is you see as being the person to play it. Like whether you think you can get them or not, just write it for that that person. Mm -hmm. And I had Clifton Powell in mind. And <laughs> look at that. I, I wound up getting him in the film. That's awesome. That's awesome, Tony. Once again, we're talking to Tony Lindsay, the director, writer, and executive producer of Where Hearts Lie. It's getting a screening on Fox Soul on December 18th. What time, Tony? What time on December 18th? Um, I believe it's I believe it's gonna air at 12 p.m. Um, and by the way, my movie is gonna be the first feature film that is gonna debut off of that platform. So like this is mm. a really big deal for me, and you know, we're all excited about it. That's awesome. That's awesome, Tony. I, I want to dive into the film a little bit, and then we'll we'll show the the trailer. In mm -hmm. this film, you talked about how it touches on uh, mental health, child abuse, and even dementia. Just were those something? Were those things? I mean, you talked about this kind of derived from a, a, a book that you were writing about yourself. But what what was the importance about putting those specific you know things? elements to the movie inside the movie why, why was it so important to add like a child abuse aspect along with the relationship aspect and even mental health aspect into this really great film well i think the main uh thing about that is the representation i think that what we see in movies nowadays is pretty much the same old thing it's a very flattened depiction of not even just black life, well, specifically black life, though, when it comes to certain issues. Yeah. So I will say that. And like, there were so many elements in the film that I wanted to relay because I felt that my experiences were just not being reflected in film. And, you know, this is something that, you know, I've talked about a lot with a lot of people. And mm -hmm. so, you know, there was a large basis um, from, you know, I did take some elements from my own life in the film, mm -hmm. like being an, uh, an entrepreneur, a real estate entrepreneur is, you know, that's brave. And I am as well. Uh, uh, the single father aspect was very important to me, not even just the single father aspect, but just the representation of a black father. You know, I am, a, you know, a father, I, I have, I have four children and I am a present father in my kids' lives. So I just felt like that representation is not really seen. We don't see that anymore. I, I don't even know if we actually really ever saw it. <laughs> you know, when we when we saw it, like in shows like Good Times, you know, they, they killed off the father quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we had it with the Cosby show, but you know, that that's 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 gone. Yeah. So I thought it was important to show certain elements, like the, like like the like a full family structure. Like not to disparage or to say that there's anything wrong with single parent households or, you know, but I don't see a full black family represented anymore in film. I don't see a, a, a black mother and a black father um, raising black children together. I don't not only do I not see that often in Hollywood, but I, I don't see it in in media. I don't see it in, in, in um, you know, just advertising uh, news media. I don't really see that. So I just thought it was very important to give that representation. And when it comes to like the issues like mental illness, I think that's a, something that we don't talk about enough in the black community because we live in a recurrent state of PTSD in this country. Mm -hmm. And 
we have a lot of trust issues, <laughs> you know, with with <laughs> this government, with amongst ourselves. And so um, I think there's a lot of undiagnosed mental illness that, you know, we have not dealt with. And lastly, you know, with Alzheimer's disease and dementia, you know, my mother um, had dementia. She passed away from dementia. And, and that's something that really hits very close to me. Um, I think the like the last statistic they did, like 120, like 121,000 people died in one year. I think it was 2019, which is when they did the last study. They died from Alzheimer's and black people are they have the highest representation of Alzheimer's and dementia out of any other demographic. And wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, and in some cases, almost twice as much. So these are like very important issues that I think mm -hmm. we need to, to talk about and discuss. And child abuse, which, which you know, that's too, that's taboo. You know, yeah. we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. No, Tony, you hit on some great pieces. Once again, we're talking to Tony Lindsay, uh, the writer, director, and executive producer of Where Hearts Lie will debut on Fox Soul on December 18th. Be sure to go over and check that out. Now, Tony, you, you spoke about a lot of things. I want to play the I'm going to play the trailer now. I want to run that uh, to show everyone, and then we'll get into uh, we'll ask some more questions and go from there. Let's go ahead and do that. Semantics, the fact of the matter remains, this is a dangerous man. So that is the teaser. It, that yeah, is the it. teaser. Uh, that, that, if that doesn't tell you anything, that tells you a little bit. It was a lot going on in that teaser. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, a whole lot. Oh my goodness, Tony. It was, I, I saw a kid in the middle of the street in front yeah, of Yeah, that car. was my son, actually. My oh, wow. son, yeah, my son got his acting debut in this film. So like my directorial debut and my was, was directing my own son. Talk about that. How cool was that to have, you know, your son, your first movie ever. It's about a single father, essentially yeah. raising his son and to have your son in the film. What, what was that like for you? Man, that was a dream come true, <laughs> especially <laughs> because he was he's so good. Like, he's yeah. so talented. Like he was off book the whole time, meaning like he didn't need to, like, read his lines and, and you know, to prep. Like, honestly. My son wrote like half of his lines anyway for the film. Like he was really into this, the whole process. So it felt good to, to be working with my son on something that I'm passionate about and to see that he's passionate about it. And now, you know, he's a full fledged actor. Now he's pursuing the dream. Wow. So like, man, <laughs> give it up for him, man. Awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome to hear. Uh, Tony. So just stay in on the film. Uh, and staying on this this opportunity that you've gotten, this partnership that you have with Fox uh, to play your film, but your film, you know, first aired five years ago. What, what was that like? You know, basically having to sit on your work, something that you put your time, you know, money, capital, everything into, and then essentially have to sit on this movie for five years and in, in to finally get an opportunity like this. Just what was the last five years like knowing that you had this work? that the I'm, world really hadn't gotten a chance to see and now they get a chance to see it now? That's a good question. I really like that question. <laughs> um, there's this thing, there's this, like, it's a saying, like it, it's in the entertainment industry, whether it's the music industry, the film industry, it's like on, on the way in, like when you walk in the door, you got to decide if you're going to get it with grease or without, <laughs> right? And I knew you know, going into this as a, as a, as an independent filmmaker, first time filmmaker that, you know, it, it's, it's a difficult process, especially when, you know, to get a project picked up. So mm -hmm. I fully funded everything and I had to, you know, I signed a deal with a, a distribution company. It wasn't the greatest. It wasn't really a great deal at all. I don't want to really name names or anything like that, mm -hmm. but um, I did it 
knowing that the movie probably was not going to be promoted well, they weren't going to invest much into it because typically first time filmmakers, when their movie comes out, they don't even get a dime. I mean, that's the unfortunate mm. truth of it. They really don't get any money. So this whole day and age of streaming platforms and stuff like that, it's like a godsend for independent filmmakers and it facilitates, you know, so much more content. But when I mm -hmm. signed this deal, you know, it, it wasn't the greatest deal. I knew it wasn't the greatest deal, but I did it in order to get the movie out there. And I did it knowing that once it, it, it built up some type of uh, um, exposure that I'd be ready for the next step. So I, I kind of sat, you know, patiently, you know, and, and when the, when the contract was up, that's when I decided to go full force with the film because, you know, most of these deals, when you first come into the industry, they're, they're pretty much taking all your money. Mm -hmm. So it's like, are you going to like go super hard and, and, and to make money for somebody else? Or are you going to just <laughs> do what you got to do until it's your time? And right now it's my time. Now, how important is that independence for you or for someone that is making film. I mean, you could have probably shopped this around and gotten it picked up by, you know, a big time movie producer or whatever in Hollywood or Netflix or whatever. But this movie is 100 percent yours now. Just just how important is having that independence for you? That's very important. But I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a, an entrepreneur anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have I've had my own business for years. Like I haven't worked for anybody since like 1996. <laughs> so I understand what it means to uh, to be self-sustaining and to, you know, generate your own income. You know, I believe in financial independence. So I take that approach in, in pretty much everything that I do. So, you know, one thing I did not want to do, I didn't want to use like other people's money. But that that might just be something in me because I don't like playing with other people's money. Like and yeah. I think it's also easier even, you know, look forward thinking, it's easier to get people to invest in your dream or in your work if you're just as willing to invest in it yourself. So I was all in, you know, not too many people are going to take their own money out their own pocket on this, this dream of just, you know, putting a movie out, you know, but, you know, you, you believe in yourself, you, you don't allow people to talk you out of your dream and make it happen. And I made it happen. And I'm excited about the things to come. You know, I'm working on some some other projects and I'm really excited, man. Really. That's excited. awesome. That's awesome. Once again, we're talking to Tony Lindsay, the writer, director and executive producer of Where Hearts Lie. It's getting a debut on Fox Soul on December 18th. Be sure to check that out. That is Where Hearts Lie debuting on Fox Soul December 18th. Now, Tony, in the movie, uh, you touched on it a bit. But you talked about it. It talks about child abuse and childhood trauma. Now, there's a there's a nice. Well, I'm not gonna say a nice twist, but a surprising twist at the end of the movie. And it kind of tells you it, it kind of puts everything into perspective, in perspective right? It, it puts everything into perspective throughout the duration of the movie. Because I mean, during the duration of the movie, you're just like, what? Why are things going this way? Right. But at the very end, you right, get don't that give twist. away too much, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, not, I'm not gonna tell it, but but you get that twist that's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. What what about that childhood trauma, that early childhood trauma? What takes place for a child, how it affects them the rest of their life? Why was that so important to feature in your film? Because we one, we don't talk about it enough, and we don't really identify these things. And it's not even just childhood trauma, like. Well, well, let me explain. I think that the things that we experience during our development, mm -hmm. they, they, we carry that with us through the rest of our lives. So yes. whereas you will see how trauma can start at an early age and it can pretty much uh, guide the direction of a person's life, you can also see how positive um, um, role models and, and you know positive experiences and relationships also mold a person mm -hmm. and steer them in the right direction. Yes. And that's exemplified in the relationship that Brave has with his father. I yes. mean, his father is, is nonverbal for like pretty much the whole movie, mm -hmm. but he had such a powerful impact mm -hmm. on his son's life. And I thought it was so important to show the, the, the impact um, and influence that 
and leadership that black men do um, have and they show, they display in their families and in their relationships, especially as it pertains to their children. Because if you look, you know, if if you didn't know any better, you think that black men are just not present at all in the lives of their children. <laughs> and that's not, that's just not the case. In at fact, all. We're, re we're, we're actually um, the most represented in the lives of our children, including when not um, in a relationship with the mother. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not always ideal, I guess, you know, with two parents living in, in separate homes, but we can't just erase fathers from the picture if they're not living at home with the child, because there are many fathers who are active in the lives of their child in some cases, more so active than the mother, even when the child lives with the mother. So we really need to start talking about those things and and just rewrite the whole um, narrative on black relationships and black men and the roles that they play in the lives of their children. Yeah, yeah, Tony, you're absolutely right, because like, especially in media, it's most important through media because the reality is what you just said. But yeah. what the representation is a totally different thing. What you see, whether it's the news, what you see on TV, what you see in film does not just does not represent. It doesn't add up to what you just said. Like you said, I think statistically black men are the most involved with their children out of any parent demographic. But if you watch the news or the media, it doesn't, oh, it doesn't tell that, that story. It doesn't tell that story. Did, did you have something? And what's funny about that is when I sent out the script to uh, Clifton, okay, first of all, listen, I, I, I really, like, we sent the script out. We, we, we reached out to management, whoever we could. You know, we went on IMDb and we're like, please, can we just find this man? We couldn't <laughs> find Clifton Powell. Like, we got no answer. We were, it was almost time to start shooting. And at the last minute, I get a call from Clifton Powell. He mm. loves the script and he wants to do it. And when he got to New York, like he's, first of all, I'm going to tell you, that, that brother is a cool brother. Like Clifton Powell is probably the coolest cat that you ever meet in Hollywood. <laughs> and we talked for a long time. You would think that we went to like school together or something. But <laughs> he told me that when he read the script, it, it he related to it so much and it, it jumped out at him that he said that he just had to do it. He just mm. had to do it, no matter like what the money was, because it 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 resonated with him. And and what's funny, what's interesting is, you know, over at Fox Soul, um, you know, I had a a, a little conversation with the uh, president over there, and he pretty much said the same thing that he really loved the the representation in the film, which is not the typical depictions that you see of black men. So. Mm. You know, I think that's something that resonates with us and not just with black men. It resonates with with the whole black community. Absolutely. And, you know, when I on the day when we premiered the film, because we did a, a um, uh, our movie premiere was in a, a movie theater, it was an AMC theater in um, New York City. And we packed two theaters like it was wow. it was just too big for one theater. So we had, we packed two theaters. And after that movie, first of all, the greatest feeling is just sitting there and just watching the reaction. Like, you know, when you're, when you're I'm, I'm editing the film, I'm doing this, and I'm like, oh, this is a funny part right there. But when yeah. you're sitting in the audience and you see people laughing at that part or you see people <laughs> crying at certain parts, man, there's no better feeling than that. And, you know, after the movie was done, so many people um, approached me to talk to me about their own personal life experiences mm. and how you know, it related to them in the film. So I know that this film touches people on a, on a, on a, a deeper level. And this, it inspires me more to do more of this work, which is actually why I'm, you know, I'm doing a, a campaign to start to just pretty much revolutionize the film industry and, and rewrite the representation that we've currently seen so far. Yeah. Like as Tony mentioned, he's got a, a fundraiser, Impacting change through filmmaking. Uh, you can go to Facebook and donate right here to the fundraiser. Now, Tony, I'm going to ask you as we have this pulled up, what exactly are the people donating to? What exactly can they expect from you and your team moving forward? Yeah, well, as you know, like Where Hearts Lie, I fully funded that project, came out of my, my pocket 100%. And <laughs> the fact is, 
you know, filmmaking is a very expensive endeavor. And, you know, I'm all in no matter what. So what I decided to do was, you know, just put together a fundraiser, you know, just to take any type of donations, whatever. I don't, I don't care if it's $5. I don't care if it's $100, $1,000, whatever it is. But the mission is to revolutionize this film industry by starting a new film company, one that will that will be dedicated to providing real stories, like like stories that we don't typically see in Hollywood. You, you know, you know, back in the days when you when when you could go to a movie and it was just like a, a, a good story. It didn't have to be like like a, a super action flick or whatever, even though those are cool. But yeah. we don't have good storytelling anymore. And we have so many amazing stories that are just not being told. And I want to you know, change the representation that we often see because, I, you know, it, it's, it's the flattening that we were talking about before, the, the flattening of the representation, specifically of the black community. We need better. And we're not going to get that from the, the larger entities in Hollywood. So, you know, I'm all about community building. I'm all about institution building. And I want to build something that I can provide the right type of product, the right type of imagery, and, and, and the right type of impact for our people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Once again, you can go to Impacting Change Through Filmmaking on Facebook. That's Impacting Change Through Filmmaking. That's Tony Lindsay and his team getting ready to put more. real. See, that's the thing I, I loved about Where Hearts Lie, because it was so realistic. It was super. And, that, and that's why so many people reached out to you after your initial showing, because right. like you said, someone either you have in your family or been affected by someone with dementia or some sort of sickness right you yep. have someone who who has a parent that's gone through that auntie uncle cousin whoever or in so, in all of us child abuse almost, is just so child many abuse issues. Yeah. In, in relationship problems we're all trying to figure out how to make these relationships work with each other and sometimes they're just destined to fail from the from the beginning it, whether it's the man's fault the woman's fault we're not here to blame anyone but that's just what happens and i think that's why where Hearts Lie touched so many people, and it will touch even more people when it airs on Fox Soul December 18th. Tony, I want to ask you just what I, I want to get a little technical when it comes to making a film. You said this was your first time. You you had to you did everything with your money, with your funding, your time on your and dime. On your, <laughs> yeah, it was on your time on your dime. Just how how was that process getting your leading man, your leading woman, casting, directors, all these different things, camera equipment? Just what was that? Take me back to that time and what was that like for you, an independent filmmaker actually making a film all on your dollar? Yeah, that there were a lot more steps to this than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, what's funny is typically, you know, most filmmakers, they start out doing like short films, mm -hmm. you know, they're like five minutes to 15 minutes long, you know, things like that. But I just jumped <laughs> right in. Or they go to school for it or something, you know, well, like they, right. they have some formal education behind it or something. <laughs> and right. And I don't have the formal education behind it. I mean, I am an artist and I am, but I am very meticulous and technical. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I, I started with, we had an editor when we started the process, but, you know, he had other obligations. So, you know, while he was editing the film, you know, I was learning, you know, as a director, wow. I know what I want. So I'm telling him, this is what I want. I want to see it cut here, cut there. But during the process, I was like, man, listen, I learned how to edit, you wow. know, you know, but from the beginning, you know, I, I wrote, I first wrote an outline of the movie. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is I didn't even write the script until like a week before <laughs> we shot. Wow. So, yeah. So it's like picking out the team. You got to find a producer. You got to find a, uh, an AD, assistant director. You got to mm -hmm. do the casting. And this stuff can get very expensive. You got to do location scouting. You got to get PAs. You got to do the, the craft services, you know, the food, set everything up. You know, you got, man. But luckily, as a real estate investor, what's funny is I use a lot of, I use mostly my own properties mm. um, for location shooting in the movie like brave's apartment where he lives that's me that's my apartment that's my crib <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah that's so awesome you know how to you know pinch yeah. a penny 
where you can. And, you know, the whole movie was pretty much shot in Brooklyn in, in East New York in my neighborhood. And, you know, I'm very much into, I'm very community minded and community oriented. So I did get, you know, people from my community um, you know, I hired people from my community to also work on the film as well. So I just think that we should always keep things um, uh, in, a, in, in, a, in a community mindset. You know, we, you know, I practice what I preach when it comes yeah. to the upliftment of black people and, and providing opportunities when I can, you know, and hopefully, you know, that will be reciprocated at some point in the future. But, you know, I'm, I'm very encouraged. You know, this project, man, it's it's a I really love it because, you know, I'm, I'm really I'm really proud of this work. You know, it took a lot of work, a lot of work. And I finally get to, you know, show this to the world the way that I want to show it and to my community. And I hope I make you all proud. That's so awesome, Tony. That is so awesome. Once again, we're talking to Tony Lindsay, the writer, director, executive producer of Where Hearts Lie. And we'll get a, a feature debut on Fox Soul December 18th. Be sure to check that out. Tony, I want to get you out on this. Uh, just talk to me about how, you know, how your film was introduced to Fox Soul, working that out and getting it to finally air and what's that relationship been like and, and you know, if you have any plans for the future, what kind of that looks like as well? Right. Well, um, a, a friend of mine, very good friend of mine, Celicia Thompson, uh, she's the one that actually brokered the, the the deal, took the film over to Fox Soul. She's uh, she's um, very established in the industry. She manages, uh, she's a television producer. She manages um, Celicia, uh, I'm sorry, Selena Johnson. Selena Johnson mm. is her sister. And mm. Selena's also on the soundtrack to the movie. And we actually have oh, a really pretty good soundtrack. We got we got like songs with Akon. We got Sel Selena Johnson. We got B.O.B. You guys did it up for an indie film. You guys did it yeah. up for an indie film. <laughs> yeah, we got, you know, we have, it's a, it's a nice soundtrack. We got some good music. Um, the score was done by uh, Lauren Dawson. He's a, man, this guy, his brother's talented. Uh, he's uh, the husband of Terrell, Terrell Hicks. Um, Terrell Hicks, um, Keisha from Belly. I don't know. If you, yeah. Yeah. You Okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, she's also in the film. Terrell mm -hmm. is also in the film. Like, man, I, I just want to. I could not have done this on my own. You know, I did a hell of a lot of work, <laughs> but it took a village. You know, and I just want, if I could leave anything with you guys, it's that we can accomplish anything that we set our mind out to accomplish, as long as we we are diligent and we we keep passion involved in it and as a community we have to you know be willing to trust each other let our guard down and work together because i'm telling you man it takes a village it really takes a village you can be the most skilled at whatever it is but when you build a network with people that you trust and people who are 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 like-minded and people of integrity there's nothing that you can't accomplish you're absolutely right about that, Tony. Once again, we're talking to Tony Lindsay, the writer, director, and executive producer of Where Hearts Lie, will debut on Fox Soul December 18th. Be sure to tune over to the Fox Soul YouTube page and check out Tony Lindsay's film, his, his directorial debut. <laughs> it's yeah. good. It was awesome. I love the movie so much. Tony, thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to speak with us and to promote this movie because it is something, it's a different perspective and I loved it so much and I know the audience will too. Once and it's again, all black. <laughs> it's all black. All black all the time. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hit the thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe on your way out and we will see you next time. Peace.